In this installment of the Gate Design series, we'll be discussing runners, which are a part of the feed system. The feed system is the section of the mold that allows molten plastic to flow from the nozzle of the injection molding machine to the mold's cavity. It consists of a sprue, runner, and gate. Molten plastic first flows from the nozzle into the sprue, then through the runner and gate, and finally into the mold's cavity to fill out the part. Runners can either be cooled and ejected with the part, or kept molten and retained in the mold between cycles. These options are referred to as cold runners and hot runners, respectively. In this video, we'll be discussing the pros and cons of each option so you know which will likely be used for the parts you design, and you will learn how the runner type affects the quality of your parts. Cold runners are a great option for low volume parts because they are easy to machine, the most economical choice up front, and other than the occasional cleaning to remove buildup, they require very little maintenance. Because of the ease of cleaning, cold runners are a great fit for parts that require frequent color changes, they allow for gating either on the edge or the top of a part, and cycle times with cold runner systems are typically longer due to the larger shot size required to fill the runner plus the part as well as the added time it takes to cool the thicker runner for ejection. The runner is typically seen as scrap, though that can be mitigated by granulating it and mixing it with virgin resin. Therefore, it's important to optimize runner volume to help minimize the amount of scrap and increase process efficiency. To mitigate the cost of regrind, molders and toolmakers will turn to hot runner feed systems, which are heated flow paths for the resin that extend from the nozzle of the injection molding machine all the way to the cavity of the mold. Hot runner manifolds are normally purchased from a company that specializes in their design rather than being made from the same toolmaker who makes the mold. They are complex pieces of equipment that require heating elements, insulated flow channels, and their own controllers. Because molds with hot runners require this extra manifold, they are more expensive and the increased mold stack heights may require larger press sizes than cold runner molds. The main benefit of hot runner systems is that they eliminate scrap from runners and sprues, which not only saves on material costs for the part, but is also great from a sustainability perspective. This makes them a perfect fit for high volume parts and high cost resins. Other benefits include automatic degating, the flexibility to put the gate on top of the part away from the perimeter, and the ability to control the temperature of each hot drop. The gate size must be optimized to ensure that the material inside each hot drop stays molten and that it remains inside the manifold when it, the part ejects, rather than pulling out. If the part requires weld line position control, sequential valve gates can be used. Valve gates have a movable pin incorporated into their design so they can control the flow of plastic into the mold. The pins can be controlled independently so the timing of the gate's opening and closing can be optimized. The vestige left behind from a valve gate looks like an ejector pin's witness mark, which is more acceptable than the rough vestige left by other gate styles. And because of the ability of the valve gate to seal shut, larger gate sizes are made possible. In addition to controlling weld line position and formation, sequential valve gates can also reduce clamp tonnage requirements. Valve gates do add to the complexity and cost of the tool though. Hot runners increase the time material spends at elevated temperatures, which can be concerning for thermally sensitive resins such as PVC and PEAK. Color changes create another opportunity for cosmetic issues when using hot runners. They can be challenging to clean in between runs because of dead spots in the flow path, so particles of colorant tend to hang up in those areas. Other cons include generally smaller gate sizes to prevent overpacking since they don't freeze off, and difficulty controlling the shot size for smaller parts because of the increased runner volume introduced by the manifold and the high compressibility of molten plastic. The choice of runner type will depend on the material, the number of parts that will be made, and the allowable budget for the mold. Cold runner molds cost less up front and are appropriate for any resin. However, they will lead to an increased cycle time and scrap rate when compared to molds with hot runners. Hot runner molds are more efficient, so they are a good fit for high volume parts and high cost resins. However, they require more capital investment, require larger presses and additional controllers, and they need more maintenance than molds with cold runners. Understanding these differences allows us to plan our gating strategy to optimize the quality of our parts. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to let us know 
and comment below with any questions or topics you would like to see covered on the channel. Also, remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of our new content. And if you have a specific problem you'd like to discuss with one of our plastics experts, please reach out. Our contact information is in the description box below. We'll see you in the next video.